Hello and welcome everyone to another episode. Yes, yeah, so, um, I've decided it's time to start on some mega ship construction. Uh, definitely been lacking in this department a little bit, but it's time to pick it up. Uh, there's certain things that we need, and as you can see from the name and obviously the title, we are going to start on our mega ship construction. Now, I'm really kind of at a loss right now because I'm trying to figure out the best possible configuration for a tanker. And what I had last time worked actually pretty well. And I'm trying to figure out something that will kind of match up to it and also kind of bring in some of the new parts as well. Now, some of the major things things that I'm looking for, you know, it, one of the things being a big major is uh, stability. Uh, my last ship, if you want to call it that, or whatever, my last tanker really didn't have a lot of stability, and it actually drove me somewhat crazy. Uh, it was pretty annoying, put it that way. Um, I, I just, I couldn't find... A happy medium between controlling it and everything else it was just it, it drove me crazy just a little bit um, but you know I'm gonna try to fix that now um, my best bet is kind of gonna be with this configuration at least I'm gonna try uh, right now I'm just going to gonna go through the construction phase um, you know I, I feel like uh, what I've been doing at least my, um, what I'm perceiving, uh, is, you know, I'm thinking you guys are getting a little bored with it. I don't know, to be honest. Um, you know, the feedback has been a little bit lacking and stuff like that. Not saying that you guys haven't been feeding back, you know, or whatever, but, you know, I'm just kind of going with the flow right now. Um, you know, I, I do plan on setting up a communications grid around the moon, and this will be my tanker so we need to get fuel from Kerbin to the moon so this is the best way I, I can really honestly come up with it and really think that this is going to work a, a style like this um, but the number one thing is we need to add some more struts to it where's the struts um I, I hope you guys like the build videos too I, I really don't know if you guys like them or not but I like doing build videos because they're kind of fun to me because I, I can watch them later and kind of figure out certain stuff where I went wrong or whatever and, you know, kind of fix that for later. But let's get this on here. Um, this looks pretty good. So let's see. What else do I need? Uh, struts. Or not struts, the these things, yeah, yeah. Put these on here. Um, well, actually, let's test something out here real quick. See, the number one thing that I always end up figuring out later is how I'm going to end up setting some things up. And usually that's stuff like this. So let's see. I need to see how long an orange tank is, too. That's kind of the other compared to this because I need them to match up a little bit it doesn't have to be perfect but I want them to match up now yeah that, that isn't gonna work I don't think so we'll just throw that to the side here um now this is like basically going to be the center of it I'm gonna kinda copy the old style of the tank we used before but I really don't know if that's going to work a hundred percent now, let's see, maybe this will work. Uh, I don't really like using these, but this might just be what we need just to get the right uh, height in at the end here and then attach these off to the side. So I'm going to kind of try, I'm going to copy the original tank a little bit. Well, I should say the original moon fuel tanker thing, whatever, the carbon fuel tanker that I built before. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm not going to do like a complete rip off of it, but 
I do want it to be very similar to the last design. So that is going to be the major factor in how I construct this thing and how it's going to go. So that is basically what I really, really want to do. And I just want this thing to work very well and be able to do everything that I need and not... Uh, the one thing that was a major problem with the last tanker was the fact that it had like its own spin to it. It would just start moving at random, which was somewhat annoying, I, I will say. Uh, don't really know how to fix that so much, but I do know that it has to do with kind of like clipping parts and stuff like that, and I'm going to try to refrain from doing that at least for a bit or at least try not to do it I, I i don't know but we'll figure something out hopefully so the main problem with building these things i will say too is lining up these docking ports like perfectly because sometimes it just doesn't work out at all it really just gets absolutely annoying so Let's see, I, I mean, there's really not too much I want to do to the front of this, and the other major problem will be the takeoff, so the takeoff isn't probably going to go so well, and I'm probably going to have to keep redesigning my rocket until I can get, like, a perfect takeoff, but this is kind of, like, the overall design I want to go for, and, uh, yeah, I'm probably going to add... I'm thinking I'm going to put ion engines on it, but at the same time, I really don't want to put them on there because in reality, it's kind of like added weight and it really doesn't do much. Um, if we were building something that were, say, going to EVE or uh, Duna, maybe not Duna, but maybe EVE or, um, you know, Moho or something like that, I would definitely consider, but the problem is, is just that when you get closer to the sun they work the ion engines actually are helpful in a sense because you end up getting a lot more power out of one panel and you can also power say six ion engines or four ion engine ion engines with one solar panel so it really does work out at the end when you're close to the sun but if you're not you might as well just be pushing like I don't know with a, a a solar flare or not solar flare but what are those things called the solar sails yeah those things are like just about as worthless so but you know over a long time they make a big difference but you know it to expect something out of something like this like that it, it no it just doesn't work so Let's see, I'm going to have to slap on one of these, and I'll put that here, and I'll just copy this, and I'll put these right here. This will be kind of like the front of our ship. Um, I don't plan on making this manned. I think it would be cool, because I could probably fit a little command pod right here, and it probably wouldn't affect the stability of the craft in any kind of way. Let's see, can I fit this little thing in here? Um, and that's what she said. Uh, okay, let's see. Um, I'm going to need... I think I can use... The first time I actually have like a really good use for this thing. I can just slap this on right here. That would probably look pretty cool. I could probably put that on... Yeah, let's see. Where is that part? Just bend this over. Wow, that does not sound right. Um, put that right here. Now we could use that as... I, I don't know, they look like they're clipping a little bit. I don't know if that's going to work out too well, but... I, I really hope that wouldn't cause any problems, but it probably will, as it normally does. Now let's see. Um, I got a better idea. I think I might move this up just a little bit. And bring it up more towards the front of the craft, kind of where the other command module is the robotic command module there we go that way yeah that actually kind of looks awesome so what we're gonna do on the front of this because this is gonna be basically the front of our craft um, I might just slap on a couple docking ports on the front um, I'm 
thinking just p filling this whole thing with docking ports. Only because the best part about it is, is instead of having like a long mast coming out of the front of it, it, it this will just work out better because the, instead of having one place to dock, you have five places to dock. And I can also dock up a craft to it and then carry the craft around someplace or whatever. Because when this thing gets really big, because there's going to be another couple sections to this, which this will be, I should label this as section one. There we go. And that's the other thing with mega ship construction. I mean, it, when you're building a ship that's being sent up in parts, label your parts. Make sure you know what part is what. I mean, I go as far as just putting section one. You can actually, you know, name it whatever you want. So, but this is just kind of the stuff I like to do. So, let's see. We're going to have to slap on a lot more struts. Just an ungodly large amount of struts. So, and these things, you know, are your bread and butter. Never, ever question the strut. The strut is always, always perfect and always right and all-knowing and all-wise so let's see we put one here and we just put one here I like to attach them to the bolts of this thing because then it kinda hides the bolts but it also kinda looks blends in with the structure a little bit but that's just me you know I, I play this game a lot differently than most people and a lot of people out there really don't even have an imagination when it comes to this game so which is surprising but hey what, what can you do now, I, I'm going to add struts here, connecting all this stuff up, and I'm going to have them connecting to these three, but obviously not connecting this one. I just don't want to use symmetry because it's going to screw things up, and I'm going to have struts underneath here, and it's just going to look weird. So, I mean, I could probably get away with it, and it wouldn't be that big of a deal, but I don't know. Well, whatever. We'll, we'll just see for now. I'll test it out just for fun. So yeah, this isn't going to look right in the front. A little bit, it's going to be a little off, but I'm okay with this just because this is the front of the craft, and that is just perfectly fine. I, I really don't care, to be honest. With that, I really don't care. I mean, it looks good to me, so I'm, I'm pretty much okay with that, as long as it looks good to me, whatever. So I think I'm going to have to put on some SES modules these big ones seem like they're gonna be pretty good I don't know I wanna make sure this thing is pretty friggin stable and I don't know how I'm going to do that a hundred percent um hmm see the problem is what it comes into is just you gotta learn how to pack stuff in the best places you can put it like I could put this here and that would probably work out really well, but I'm afraid of the par the parts clipping thing. So, I mean, I, this is always a test craft, so if anything really does happen, and say it doesn't work, I can always just rebuild this part and send it back up. And, let's see, can I get this to clip? It looks like it doesn't want to clip, so that that's just a shame. But I can get one, and where I can get one, I can get two. Now, I don't know how well this stability stuff is really going to work out in my favor, whether or not it's going to, I just don't know. It, you know, that with this game, the way it's been changed, and I, oh yeah, I should mention, I've had some bugs, which I'm going to mention in the next episode, but... Overall, we got our first piece. Um, I'm probably going to add some solar panels to it because that would only seem right. So we'll do it the way the game intends you to add solar panels, which just turn on the symmetry, get four, there we go, and boom. Now all we need is a good, decent solar panel. All right, well, there we go. So this is kind of like what I what I do with the solar panels at least because this just works out it, it, there's really no better way to me to be uh, for me to be honest that's the best way I think so what is this 18 a minute 
And then, yeah, the stability of this thing is gonna be nutty, but... Since when do these use 20? Uh, I'm, I'm kind of like a little confused right now because of the fact that... Wait, you know what? I could get rid of these. I don't know why I put these on here. <clears throat> Excuse me. I don't know why I put these on here, but I could just probably use these and get away with it. I'm sure somebody will be like, you know, you did it wrong or whatever, but maybe these will let me get away with it. I've never really used these things, so I don't know um, if they operate the same. Whoop, there we go. I don't know if they operate the same way or if there's going to be a difference or if whatever. It, it's all... Uh, it's all a mystery. That's all I can say. So what I'm going to end up doing, as you can see, I got my launch craft under here. What I will do is I'm going to run the fuel lines from uh, from these to the main engines or whatever, the main atmospheric stages, and basically all these tanks are going to get sucked dry. So that kind of solves the fuel problem for now. I, I mean, I really don't have a problem with the fuel, I should say, but that that system really works well for me so I just kinda stick with that um, the main problem is is the fact that the launch has to go perfectly so I might end up launching this thing a, a couple times oh and I almost forgot SAS systems I might as well add those as well so SAS or well SAS I should say RCS control yeah um I think I'm going to stick with putting them in the middle. That will probably help with uh, the stability of the SAS system later on. Because once these parts are all combined, the, you know, they're pretty much going to be locked up in perfectly. So it really doesn't need to be 100% perfect. So, But, well, I mean, with this, it's going to be perfect for the most part because... Once the second part gets docked up, these will all be lined up exactly, like, perfectly. So it, it's really not that big of a deal. They should be overall pretty stable. We aren't going to be using RCS for a lot of things on this, because at the end it's going to probably have about six engines, I'm thinking. If not, a cluster of, like, I don't know, maybe eight or ten engines. And that is just to get this thing going, because honestly using four engines like we did before I think maybe it was five it just wasn't enough it, it was just to go from the moon or from Kerbin to the moon or from the moon to Kerbin was painfully slow for me it took like four or five minutes and I want to knock that down to like maybe two minutes or something or a minute burn just to get things going a little bit quicker it's just annoying so Anyways, let's. I'm just gonna put on a few more struts. Um, I, I don't want to OD on them like I did with Kerbal Space Station or anything like that, but just want to get. I want to make sure this thing's pretty stable for launch, a and when it's in space too. It's kind of a little bit of both. So I'll bring this down again a little bit. I'm a little picky with how the struts turn out. If they, they just don't look right to me, I'll, I'll move them around a lot. So. But if you guys don't really like these build videos, I won't do as many of them. Uh, you know, definitely just let me know. Um, you know, let me know in the comments or whatever. If you guys don't want to see so many build videos, then I won't do build videos as often. But I kind of enjoy doing these because, once again, it leaves a little bit of a record. And I can understand where my failures are and all that other good stuff. So, I think something like that would look awesome. But that's just me. Let's see. I don't know. This thing's getting a little strutty. A little bit... Yeah, I'm going to take this off. Well, anyways, guys. You know what? This is kind of the beginnings of the Kerbin Fuel Tanker. Um, I'm probably going to add a few things like I normally do. And I'll let you know in the next video. And, uh, yeah. So, if you like what you see here, subscribe. There's always more to come. Uh... Yeah, to all you new people, welcome, and uh, yeah, I will see you next time.